Hi, it's Deb Watson, and today we're painting flowers. Here's my original photo, and here is the painting you're going to see. Visit watsonwatercolor.com for the free lesson. I start with an outline and wet the paper so I can tone the whole thing with yellow. Toning your paper before you start will help give your painting a unified look. As some of the zinnias are orange, I'm establishing that color early. The orange may spread out, but staying in the lines is highly overrated, especially in your early washes of color. Plus, it's going to dry much lighter, so don't worry about it. Now, I do want the centers of two flowers to be lighter, so I dab the color up with the paper towel. Once this layer is dry, the first wash of green goes on. I'm not painting leaves. Everything that isn't a flower or butterfly is going to be painted light green. Starting with layers of color and saving the detail till last will give your painting a solid foundation and it's easier. Just make sure your outline is dark enough and your first washes are light enough that you will be able to see and follow the outline for the rest of the painting. While the green dries, I start painting the center of the flowers. Every one is a little different. The second layer of green is darker than the first, but will still dry as just a medium value. We're starting to build depth with darker green behind the lighter leaves. I have to keep referring to my photo to know where to paint the color. You could put X's on the areas that will be darker when you do the outline, and that does make it easier to follow. To create depth, the value of the color gets darker with each layer that is further down. The lighter layers seem to pop out. Just paint the color in layers and you'll be surprised how nice it looks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. My videos don't get enough views and I'd really appreciate your support. The butterfly needs a coat of color too. And now all the initial washes are done. You can finally start painting things. You can add as much or as little detail as you like. I like a lot of detail. It's hard to stop. I start on a few of the flowers, adding more color and a little definition to the petals and the centers. An even darker green gets painted in the big shadow areas to break them up and create the suggestion of more leaves and stems. The front leaves will get some shading with soft washes of color and water. I do a lot of balancing. Decide what needs to be darker to push it farther back, paint it, and evaluate again. Creating depth is not so much about getting the details right as it is getting the values right. The lightest leaves are on the top and the darkest areas are the farthest down. You can push a dark green even farther back by washing over it with a dark blue color like phthalo blue. Cooler colors recede while warm colors come forward. You can find which colors I use on my website in the materials lesson. I use mostly transparent pigments because they make the cleanest, most glowing mixes, especially darks. And dark values are important if you want realism in your painting. So, now you know all the tricks for depth and realism in watercolor. Keep layering until everything has a first coat of color, and then take your time to build up the value and details. 
An important thing to remember, if you get burnt out and you just don't want to look at it anymore, take a break. Put it away. People look at a great painting and think the artist whipped it out in no time at all. That's not usually true. After you work on something for a long time, your brain loses the ability to judge color and value. It gets overheated. You'll know because that's about the time you start to get discouraged. So when you're feeling discouraged, leave it. Your painting will look miraculously better the next day. You can work on a different painting but if you push on when you're feeling discouraged, the results are never good. This painting took me almost three hours to paint, and I did stop in the middle, feeling discouraged. The next day, it wasn't so bad. You can paint this without half the details I'm putting in, and it will still look great. To paint the darkest values, you may need to give the areas three or more layers of color. If the whole area gets too dark, lift some off with Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser and repaint what details you need. That's if your paper can handle that. I use arches and it works quite well. At the end, I use Mr. Clean to lift out some highlights and soften detail where I overworked it. I hope that helps you to understand depth and realism in watercolor. Don't start with the detail. You're not painting a leaf. You're painting a green value. Start with loose washes of light color. Then build up depth and color with more washes. And then you can add as much or as little detail as you like. Please check out my free website and start painting today. Happy painting!